Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on UFT automation. Uh, this is part three of the data table concepts. Uh, in this video, we will take our uh, database, data table concepts that we learned in part one and part two, and we will actually apply it uh, while working with our uh, sample application. And the way uh, the things are being done in this video that you know the concept or the, the style that I show you that's pretty much how it is done in the real time and uh, I'm gonna go a little slow so you might want to bear with me and probably it's it's a good thing because uh, uh, even if it takes an extra five or ten minutes uh, it will definitely you know help you because you know you learn once and then you know, uh, you, know you, sh you should be able to apply it uh, to you know pretty much any application uh, there might be other things that come in way but you know the concept will not change well with that said let's uh, dive into uh, you know our um, you know these concepts here and applying these so to start off with to kind of set the stage what I want to do is uh, you know what let me go open the spreadsheet so I can talk about it uh, I'm going to use sample flight reservation uh, spreadsheet So here, what I have is, uh, you know, spreadsheet is logins. You know, that's a sheet name, and I have login and password. I have login is test one through test five, and it's Mercury five, Mercury all, you know, in uppercase and then lowercase, then all uppercase. You know, a kind of mix of lower and upper, and then I have uh, Mercury one. What I want to do is, um, I want to use this spreadsheet login into the application using these credentials and track if it was successful or you know if I had an issue you know if it fails I want to track it that it failed and if it passes then I also want to track the status so primarily the bottom line is I want to try this combination and track the status so this is our data so it's all you know in Excel nothing in the uh, you know nothing in the UFT let me close this so uh, I'm going to use sampler two here. You know, sampler one is all commented out. This is the you know you know sheet or this is the action that we you know kind of looked at in part one and part two. It's all you know commented out. So if I were to run it, you know it does nothing. And then next I have is you know sampler two, and all I have you know everything is a comment here. So that's the structure. You know we will we'll create a new uh, sheet. And then we'll import the data. We'll use the you know import the data from the you know spreadsheet that I just showed you. We'll import the data from there into this data sheet. And then you know we will you know uh, add a column to that data sheet. You know because we need to track the status. So we'll add a, a column to track the status for each entry. And then we'll you know count the rows and then we'll iterate through it. But before we iterate, we need to make sure that we have repositories. So I'm going to load the repositories on the fly, and uh, I'm going to ignore function libraries for now. You know, um, I mean I can use it if I want to, but I'll just ignore it for now. And then you know I'm going to put a little logic in there to uh, process each row. Here I'm not really you know not really processing each row, each row I'm going to take the data from each row try to log in and if it fails I'll track something and if it passes then I'll track something else which would be you know success so that would be you know kind of uh, overview of our goal within this uh, you know script so let's start with you know step one here which would be you know adding new sheet you may have already seen this you know in the other script It's very simple I'm going to just paste the line here uh, data table dot add sheet uh, user logins now where does this get uh, user logins gets added does it add here is it is this step 15 going to create a, a data table here no because this is going to be your it will be within your runtime data table so once it is created you know we want to you know add or you know import the data and I'm going to just copy the line here uh, in the simple syntax. Sorry. 
data table or import and the spreadsheet name or you know the path to the spreadsheet and the you know the sheet name the source you know within the spreadsheet the sheet name was logins and we want to import the data from there into the destination which would be our logins here so that's where the data will go and then um, I want to add uh, a new uh, column to this spreadsheet because once it gets imported all you have is login and uh, password I want to add a third column you know called status so that I want to so that I can track that means I'm on during runtime I'm going to populate that column so for that first we need to create so data table dot get sheet and we want to work with this sheet now within that sheet you know the columns are parameters it's add parameter and for that you need to say well you know you need to provide a name so that would be the name and you give that and look at this okay sorry status comma that now if you're wondering you know what is this uh, thing here uh, why did I put a comma and why you know, I know that it takes it you know and uh, you know intelligence is really not giving you much information here right so then how would you actually know that double click add parameter hit F1 it will pull the help and take you to the right spot to look for that I mean it will search for that you can do you know the very first one is that and it says assigns a value to the first row of the parameter and that's unfortunately that's a required um, uh, argument to be passed so we will um, just you know pass a blank thing in there so it's going to add that column and it will it will be a blank value for now so now that we did that let's count the number of rows and we already know it's very simple row count equal to data table dot get sheet so that's here I'm going to copy all that paste it here and then say get row count so that will count all you know number of rows from the uh, spreadsheet now once you have it there you know this particular um, uh, test has no object repository there's nothing there it's all blank so I want to load the object repository and just in case you know if you forget it's nothing it, it start you want to load object repository so you want to work with repo just do that and you'll get object repository collection then say you want to add and now if you look at this add and do that then you get the path there it says I mean you get a little help so it requires a path so I already have the path uh, we did use this in one of the videos before so I'm gonna paste it there so a repositories collection dot add and I gave the path to the global repository so at runtime line number 28 will load the repository from here and now I'm gonna ignore number six for uh, for now and then we need now we need to write the logic we need to go through or iterate through each row and then we need to log in and then what we need to do is we need to track the status so I'll just start with the template of course we need to iterate so we need for loop right we all we know that one to what and that's the final right we need to use a row count here row count paste it there so that should at least you know iterate uh, to cover the total number of rows we have so now that we did our first step now first is you know you know yeah now that we do you know when we run it we are not starting the application anywhere you know um, we haven't started I mean if you go to record run settings yeah, this will not start any application so let's start it here that means if it is not there then we'll start it so we'll use an if condition now if if what is true so we want to look for you know when let me go ahead and start uh, the flight reservation application so when we start the application what we really get is a dialog box a login dialog box so for us to log in we need to have this available 
so we'll check for this existence and then we will proceed so that is what needs to be true that means we need to make sure that dialog box is present now unfortunately when you you know work with a shared repository and then we are loading it at the runtime then you know you're kind of a little bit handicapped because you know there is no way now when you do dialog you know bracket open there will be no intelligence there will be no help so I mean you can do it if you know the objects well but what I would recommend is uh, go ahead and associate the repository you know associate repositories and pick the one and then they will so assign it to both and now you know it's it's linked to these um, actions now if I do um, dialog bracket open it will display me both the dialog boxes now we are working with the login dialog box that's the first uh, screen that you see so I want to make sure this is present the dialog exit uh, exist and I'll say two that means it will look for you know for two seconds there wait for two seconds uh, for the that uh, you know to check if the dialog box is there or not and if that is false what I want to do is I want to start the application and how did we start the applications before we used uh, system util dot run and I, I'll just copy that line there and paste it here just to save some time so if this is not found that means if the login screen and what's our login screen if I let me go ahead and start that uh, sample application so if this screen is not found then it's going to start the application so that's what uh, that's exactly what we're doing in this step here now once we do that what we'll do is we'll set the you know uh, current row we'll say data table dot set current row and we'll use that there so once this is done now the next thing is we need to if it is found that means you know it will if it is not found it will go into 42 but if it is found that means it is within the operating system then we need to activate it so we really need to activate this form that means we need to bring it to the foreground we'll say activate and when you say dot activate it'll bring it to the foreground once you bring it to the foreground then we need to start working with it that means we need to enter or pass the login name pass the password and then click the easiest way to do this is because we associated all this what we can do is we can go to uh, object repositories then with the then we have you know the login dialog box and then within the login dialog box we have all these objects now first is we need to pass the uh, user ID user ID goes into the agent name uh, win edit box so drag and drop it there and then what we need is a password next we need to click the OK button we'll take it there close it now we can you can always you know do dialog you know I'll show that to you if you do dialog bracket open you get login then you get the whole list here win, ed, win, win button so no sorry win edit bracket open then you see so you can do that as well or you can open the registry sorry the uh, repository and then drag and drop the objects uh, that you need so the first is the login id password and ok for ok it's click we are, we, we are fine there but now dot set you know we need to pass the value uh, from you know from the table so we know how to read the value so we'll use that knowledge here you know that skill to get the values now dot set is that so data table dot value you know login and and then we're going to pass the uh, sorry we're going to pass the uh, login uh, as the parameter that means that would be the column name and then that would be the data sheet name so we know the passwords will come from the password column so this would be changed or needs to be changed to password so whatever 
the password column is and whatever values you see in there for every row it will grab that value and pass it there and you know it's kind of you have to visualize all this and the reason for that is you don't have the data here so if it makes it easy you might want to have the spreadsheet open next to you so that you can at least look at it and uh, let me open the spreadsheet real quick okay so we have spreadsheet so assume that the first row is actually the header within your uh, you know data table within UFT so when row 2 means it's row 1 within UFT so when it reads this value you know it's a column name is here so that's exactly what I'm hearing it's a parameter in terms of syntax but it's a column name so again to kind of repeat this one data table dot value you're saying you know, what's a parameter and from which spreadsheet or which data sheet so this is the one that we created and we import the data into this so we're going to use the same thing so once this is done we want to what happens when you click OK right you know it's, there's a path here I mean either it could fail or it could go through and display you the flight reservation screen so we need we need, a, we need another if condition here we need an if condition here to check few things number one is if and what is true if it uh, let's say if it was successful what would happen you would see the flight reservation window right so we will check if this flight reservation window exists or not and we'll you know we'll kind of wait for let's say a couple of seconds so we'll click OK, wait for a couple of seconds, and see, you know, if I, you know, if I, if I find flight reservation window, if I find, if I see it. So what does it mean? It means that your login was successful. Okay. So now, if I, so if I were to kind of, you know, show that to you, what it means, if I let me do this, let me start the application. So if I do test and if I pass the correct credential and click OK if it was successful then I would see the flight reservation screen as you can see it was taking a few seconds so if I see this screen that means I'm successful so let me close this so let me bump it to three seconds because it was kind of taking more than two I believe let's try this so if this is there if is if if it was successful what I want to do is I want to track the status and remember we added a new column called status so we want to update that and that is again very simple we'll say data table uh, dot value and we are working with um, uh, the column called status and this that is within this data table now we want to set the value to uh, you know you can say anything you can say pass fail or anything I'll just do pass I'll say pa I am passed so we're gonna pass this value so if that condition is met then it will pass and after that I want to close the application and and I want to close the application so I'll say window slash reservation dot close We'll close the application but this if condition only works if your login was successful but what happens if it was not successful so in order for you to you know kind of code that you have to you know, experience it first so let's say I entered something in there enter something in there okay so what I get is this oh, sorry So what I see is this incorrect password try again that's the uh, message that I'm getting now this is actually a dialog box and uh, if you don't know if it is a dialog box or not and whether if it, you have this in your registry or not I mean it's uh, quite simple you can go you know open your registry and then you can tell find highlight in application or find in repository and click on this form so do OK and it's here. It's a flight reservation and it's a dialog box. Flight reservations. Flight reservations, this is a window, but this is a dialog box. And it, look at here, there's a text incorrect password, please. 
So let me close it. So we know that that's in the registry uh, or I mean to say uh, repository. So if we see that, uh, if we see this, then it's pretty much assured that, uh, you know, our login had failed. So now we need to look for that. Right now we need another if condition to check for uh, that specific thing. So now you know we can add another if condition, or we can also do you know else because you know if, uh, if the way this works is if this is found, then it will execute this. But if this is not found, then we need to see. That means if this was not there, that means if we didn't see the flight reservation window. Then what we would see, we would we would see flight reservations dialog box. Okay. So if this is not successful obviously that is you know fail simple but now it, it, we need to you know let me open again uh, let me open the application so I'm entering some incorrect uh, information so now I have this so when, when I end up this I know that I'm not finding or I'm not seeing the flight reservation window if I'm not finding I know that it's failed so the first thing I did was it failed but in order for you to close the application and run it again you have to first you know close this dialog box you have to click OK to close it and then you have to close this one so the first step is to close the box so now what we do is we, we want to check Again, you know, you want to check if the dialog box is there. Dialog, and that's a flight reservation dialog box, and we'll say exist. If that is found, what we will do is we will click that OK button, and the OK button is on the flight reservations dot, and that's a win button, win button, and that's OK. That's the only button. That's why it auto populated, and we want to click it. And after you click it, we want to close it. What do you want to close? You want to close the actual uh, login screen. Login dialog dot close. So the logic here is if we find flight reservation window then pretty much it we you know we know that it was successful so we'll set the status to passed if it's not found then we'll you know we'll assume that it failed and you know you can do that here or you can also take it inside but pretty much if you don't see this it's pretty much fail then we'll say hey you know do i see this dialog box if i see this dialog box i'm going to click ok on the dialog box and then i'm going to you know, that if condition is done and then i'm going to close the uh, the whole application by using this uh, line 60 so this would actually uh, you know pretty much you know cover the whole thing and of course there are, you know there's a next there which would you know start processing the next row so again just a quick recap we will what we are trying to do is you know we are adding a new sheet importing the data uh, which you know there's uh, from this spreadsheet we are importing the all the rows from this sheet into this data table and we are adding a new column called status and then we are loading the repository here and then we are processing each record we are logging in if we log in successfully we'll tag the status as passed and if it fails we'll tag the status as failed but for each iteration we'll close the application because we are starting the application for every iteration using line 42 so with that said let me go ahead and uh, remove the repository association because you know we are associating it during runtime line 28 if I run it as it is it will fail let me show that to you See, it says data table import sheet operation fail because uh, it's already open another application because it's already open within UFT and you're trying to load it again that's the reason why you know it failed let me stop that and uh, go to resources object repository oh, sorry so object associate repositories and remove this and completely remove that everything is done and now let me go ahead and run this
okay because it's already opened by other application strength so I have spreadsheet open here this is one of the common problems you'll run into uh, let me close the spreadsheet stop and now uh, let me run it again Well, it looks like there is a problem and it didn't invoke the application. So let me stop it. So every now and then, you know, you might run into any situation depending on, uh, you know, you know, application, you know, things might not start. So there is a, you know, backward compatibility compatible command called invoke, uh, invoke application. And let me try this one. I know you must be wondering, hey, you know, system util dot run worked all this time, and why this did not run? Okay, definitely it is not running again. Let me let me check and uh, read on the script. Okay, it's my bad. It's um, let me go back and fix it. Uh, uh, Instead of invoke, I'm going to switch back to system util dot run now we know that we have some issue here right um, let's review this block uh, for if if block it's saying if this is found then run it you know which technically does not make any sense it should be more like if it is not um, let me see if this syntax works if I do um, I kind of switch between Java and C sharp and VB. Sometimes I get confused. I know I, I know for sure I can use false. So let me use the one most popular with VB. If I say because this what this does is it pro it returns back whether it is true or false. If it is found, it will it will return true, and if it is uh, false, it will return false. But what I want to do is if it is not found, but this will, you know, not, you know, if it is not found, that's when I want to go inside. So what I need to do really is to put equal to and say false. So if this is false, then it goes, I mean, the whole condition becomes true then. If it is not found, then go inside and run it. So let me go ahead and run it. Waited for two seconds, start the application, it failed. Let's see what it does. It closed it. Looks like it is processing the second time. It done third time. I believe this is the fourth time. And it should close the application, which it did. Oh, this is the fifth time. Okay, it's done. So it as you saw, it, it processed all the records. When I say processed, it pretty much iterated through all the records in the spreadsheet. Again, you know that spreadsheet is not in the design time data table. We need to go into the run results to look at it. Okay, let's. Uh, oh, it's here. Data. Go to user logins. So look here. For every row now we are tracking status. We know for sure we know for sure the password is Mercury. It doesn't matter which case it is, you know, it works. So Mercury 5 it failed, Mercury 1 it failed, but for the rest it passed. So there's a you know uh, it's kind of a real time. I mean most of the projects, you know, you do things like this. You know, you build a table in the runtime, track the status there right there. I mean, you know, if you want, you during the runtime, you can export this as well, right? You can just, you know, all, all it needs is uh, export statement right at the bottom here, right after 64, put an export there, and, you know, export this sheet into, you know, a desired spreadsheet. And there you go, you have the values as well. So, uh, quick recap, what we did was we added a, um, a sheet, uh, to the data table and we imported data from this spreadsheet from uh, this Excel document and we used that spreadsheet or you know sheet within that spreadsheet document 
and we added a column called status imported the registry and we applied a little logic to track status and uh, also tested for five different user IDs and passwords right so that that's how you test in real time there's no recording nothing all I used was I used the repository uh, and you know it's a shared repository I built it uh, you know offline and associated to this spreadsheet I mean to say this test case and used it to build this but you know the key here is understanding the concepts and then if you, you know the logic on how to use it, you know, for loop and if loop well I hope you enjoyed watching this video you might want to uh, you know kind of watch a couple of times to understand the concepts and if you look at it you know this is sequential steps here and all I did was I drafted the uh, drafted the steps and then logically went in and filled the you know gaps there with the actual script okay well uh, I think this is this was a pretty long video took about 30 35 minutes um, I hope it's worth your time uh, you know anyway happy learning and I will uh, talk to you in the next video